How's everybody doing today? <laughs> How's everybody doing today? Okay, I'm fixing to change that. <laughs> you know when I ask that question, something's coming. I want to pray real quick before I get started and forget. Well, Father, I thank you and I praise you. I give you all the glory, Lord. Father, I thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. I thank you for the blood of Jesus that was on that cross for us. I thank you for the Holy Spirit, the great teacher, Lord. I thank you for your presence here today, Father. I thank you for your word. And Lord, I just ask right now in Jesus' name that uh, you use me, you bring those words back that uh, you have given me in the last couple of days, that I can uh, give them to your people, Lord. So give us ears to hear and hearts to understand, Father, and a boldness just to apply it. And Father, we just uh, we ask that you give us what we need, not what we want. Because that's exactly what we need. For you are smarter than we are. So Lord, have your way in this place today and in our lives, in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. His appearing. How many of you know Jesus is coming back someday? Amen. How many are glad about that? Amen. I am excited about it. Jesus is coming back for His people. He is coming back. So what I want to do today is uh, go through some scriptures, and I have quite a few scriptures here that I want to go through, and I want to look at some. I want to look at some stuff. What if you got a letter in the mail tomorrow, and it said that on Tuesday, President Trump was going to be at your house? What would you do around your house? <laughs> or you got to notice that the police were coming to your house. What would you do with your house? So you would do something, but here, here, here's my point. President Trump would be coming to your house, so you would do whatever it is you're going to do. Not to get him to come, but because he is coming. And that's really the premise of this whole thing today. So let's get started. Let's get, did I turn that on? Yes, I did. In Leviticus 9, starting in verse 1, it says, And it came to pass that on the eighth day, that's important, the eighth day, on the eighth day that Moses called Aaron and his sons and the elders of Israel. And he said unto Aaron, Take thee a young calf for a sin offering, a ram for a burnt offering, without blemish, and offer them before the Lord." And unto the children of Israel thou shalt speak, saying, Take ye a kid of the goats for a sin offering, and a calf and a lamb, both of the first year without blemish, for a burnt offering, also a bullock and a ram for a peace offering, and sacrifice them before the Lord, and a meat offering mingled with oil. For today the Lord will appear unto you. They had all these sacrifices. Remember, Aaron is the high priest. His sons are priests. Moses is the leader of Israel, and he's telling them, the Lord is going to appear. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to sacrifice all this stuff. But he didn't sacrifice the stuff to get the Lord to come. They sacrificed the stuff because the Lord was coming. In fact, that verse right there, for today the Lord will appear unto you, is in the perfect tense. That means it's already happened. Even though back then it hadn't happened, it's written in the perfect tense, spoken in the perfect tense, meaning that it is going to happen and it's not going to change. The same way Jesus is coming back for His church. The Lord will appear again someday. It's not going to, there's nothing you can do to make it happen, and there's nothing you can do to stop it from happening. 
It's going to happen. Jesus is going to return again. So understand they're doing this because back then, now here's something else I'm going to say. And I've said this before and I'll continue to say it. Everything in the Old Testament is an external picture of the internal truth in the New Testament. Back then they had circumcision of the flesh. Ow. In the New Testament, they had circumcision of the heart. Back then, they had the Ten Commandments written on stone. Now we have the commandments written on our heart. Back then, Adam and Eve was placed in a garden. In the New Testament, Jesus taught the parable of the sower that the garden is in us and we are to take care of it. So there is all this external, and Paul says it this way. First is the natural, we were born flesh and blood. And then is the spiritual, and then we were born again of the Spirit. And if you keep these, if you keep these paradigms in mind, these, these laws, I'll just put it that way, in mind, you'll be surprised how much Scripture will open up to you knowing these truths. Because in the Old Testament, it's external. New Testament, it's internal. So let's go on. Nadab and Abihu, that is Aaron's sons. Took either of them his censer and put fire thereon, or therein, and put incense thereon, and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. And there went out fire from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. We just sang a song about incense rising. Continue incense rising. That is, that is idiomatic of praise and worship and prayer is the incense. You see that in, in the Old Testament. They had the censers. They had the golden altar of incense that they burnt incense on as prayers, an offering, and a sweet-smelling savor unto the Lord. But that was to be done a certain way. It says that they offered strange fire. Now, you can get on the Internet. I don't recommend it. And look up strange fire, and you'll get all kinds of weirdness. But this strange fire, the fire, any time there was a fire to be used, that fire was to come off of the altar of sacrifice. That was where they put the sacrifice there. God himself put the fire there, and it was to burn all the time. So everything that had to be lit, the fire had to come off of the altar of sacrifice. They took it into the, into the tabernacle. They lit the menorah with it. The menorah was to never go out because it was fire from there, and that fire came from the Lord. But they offered strange fire. Where they got the fire, it doesn't say. We don't know how they did it. Only thing we know is it was not off of the altar of sacrifice. They had a strange fire. Then Moses said unto Aaron, This is it that the Lord spake, saying, I will be sanctified in them that come nigh me. And before all the people, I will be glorified. And Aaron held his peace. This is important. What the Lord says, I will be sanctified. The word sanctified is set apart. It's also the word holy. I will be holy. I will be set apart from everybody else. If you approach me, it says that those people that come nigh me, Jesus says, come nigh unto me and I will come nigh unto you. But the thing is, when you come nigh before him, he is to be sanctified as holy. He is a holy, just, righteous God. And when they went in there and offered strange fire, they did not honor him they did not sanctify him for who he was they offered let me put it this way they did what they wanted to do god don't care we'll just we'll just do it this way 
See, there's, there, there seems to be a way that's right with man, but those ways lead to death. And here again, let, let me, I'm going to do a lot of explaining. And I've done this before. I'm going to continue to do it because I want you to understand. If you can understand these, it will open Scripture up to you in a way that you haven't seen before. Death. The definition of death is separation. If I was to fall over dead right now, blop, me, the real Richard inside, would not lose consciousness. I have just been separated from my body. That's death. You can, when Adam and Eve ate of the fruit in the garden, they were pushed out of the garden. They were separated from the presence of the Lord. That was spiritual death. If a tree gets struck by lightning, we say the tree's dead. Why is it dead? Because it's not doing what it's supposed to be doing. It's separated from its purpose. Death is merely separation. It doesn't always mean I'm going to die. Ugh, I'm dead. It means separation. So let's keep that in mind. But they did not honor him as God. Anybody that comes to God, if you go to the president's, forget the president coming to your house. He doesn't do that. You go to him. And you go to the president, there is protocol of how you get into that place. You don't just walk in and, and, and say, what's up, Trump? That ain't going to get it. There is protocol. And there's things you have to do to even get in there. And it's the same thing with the Lord. There is protocol. Leviticus 10, 8 says, And the Lord spake unto Aaron, saying, Do not drink wine or strong drink, though, that, though nor thy sons with thee, when you go into the tabernacle of congregation, lest ye die. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations. And that you may put difference between holy and unholy and between clean and unclean or unclean and clean. Don't, do not drink wine or strong drink, nor your sons, or they'll die. It is written in other writings that Aaron's sons were drunk. And I think that this is in the same chapter, right there, is in the same chapter when they died. And I believe that is true. I believe they were intoxicated when they went in there and they did it their way. And I want to talk to you just for a minute about intoxication. If I was drunk, I, let's say that I was absolutely teetotally soused up here, drunk out of my gourd, a lot of things happen. One, I walk different. Everyone sees how I walk. Our walk as a Christian, people watch. They watch what you do. They watch what you say. They watch how you do it. They watch how you say it. And so our walk in this Christian life is under examination. If I stand here teetotally drunk, I have trouble standing. Yet when we are to stand, having done all to stand, stand. And yet I can't hardly stand. I lose my sense of direction. We ought to know where we're going. We ought to know what we're doing. But when you're drunk, you lose that sense of direction. When you're teetotally drunk, you are absolutely defenseless. That's why in Peter it says, um, be sober, be vigilant. For your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, goes about seeing whom he may devour. He can't devour everybody. If he could, we would all be dead. He does not like you. So he wants to get rid of you. But if I was teetotally drunk, a, a, a 10-year-old could come in here and beat me up and take everything I've got. In fact, he could take my life because I'm totally defenseless. As a drunk, we can both... You can look at this pulpit, I can look at this pulpit, and my perception will be different than yours. 
because I'm not thinking straight. So when we see this about do not drink wine or strong drink, back then, that was exactly what that meant. Do not drink wine or strong drink. Don't, don't get drunk. But let's look at... But of the times and seasons, 1 Thessalonians 5.1, you can see that. But of the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord... Oh. The day of the Lord, His appearing... So cometh as a thief in the night, for when, no, let's stop, let's don't go too fast. This is written to the brethren, that's written to us, right? But look what he says, for when they, for when they shall say, peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child. There is that woman with child, the birth pains that we've been talking about for the last two weeks. Peace and safety, sudden destruction comes upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not of the darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. You are all children of the light and children of the day, for we are not of the night nor of the darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, and let us watch and be sober. That does not mean, well, let me be careful how I say this. That does not mean don't go get drunk, but don't go get drunk. That's not what it means. This is sober-minded. Your heart is intoxicated. And we'll look at that in a little bit clearer. For they that sleep, sleep at night. But they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us, who are of the day, be sober. There it is again. Twice it says that there. Put in the breastplate of faith, love, and uh, for a helmet, the hope of salvation. I think I want to go to here. Luke 21, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. And take heed to yourselves, least at any time. He's talking to you. Take heed to yourselves, least at any time, your hearts. He's talking about your hearts. Remember, Old Testament is outward, New Testament is inward that your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and the cares of this life, so that day comes upon you unawares. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. This surfeiting and, and that overcharged, that means that you have too much input from the world, the things of the world, whether it's Sports or news or politics or games or parties or I don't care what it is, good or bad, if there's anything that takes the place or raises itself above the place of God, it becomes an idol. And you can be drunk, overcharged with the things of this world. And this is exactly what it's talking about. That word surfeiting just means that you have taken too much to where it's painful. You have a headache being drunk. I've never been drunk a day in my life, so I don't know that much about it. But they say the next morning you have a headache. I don't know. Maybe. But this is what that word means right there, surfeiting. And, of course, drunkenness. You've taken so much that you are intoxicated with it. You can be intoxicated with something. This is exactly what this uh, verse is talking about. And I want you to remember, but my words shall never pass away. Now let me go backward to Revelation 17. 17.1, 17, And there came one of the seven angels which had seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, that doesn't, that's not heather, 
that's hither. Come hither, I will show thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. The word waters there just means a lot of people, a lot of nations. And it's talking about a great whore. A whole lot can be unpacked on this, but I'm not going to. But I want you to know this represents somebody that is married to a man. Duh. That is married. I don't want to get too vivid here, but a woman <clears throat> that is married to a man should only receive the seed of that man. Amen? Amen. Okay, there's a few amens. Some, maybe most of us aren't sure, but okay. <laughs> only receive the seed of that man. Next verse, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. This says that she has received a lot of different seeds. Remember it said, my word will never pass away. Jesus taught us a parable of the sower. And he says, if you don't understand this parable, you won't understand any of them. He said, the sower sowed the seed. And then in the next chapter, he explains what that parable meant. And the seed was the Word of God. What I see here, and what this is telling us is, this harlot has received a lot of other words. She is listening to everything. She has taken in everything. And what was happening from that? The earth had been made drunk from the wine of her fornication. It talks about that gold cup in her hand right there because of her fornication. We, as the bride of Christ, should be receiving one word, His word, not the word of the news, not the word of the scientist, not the word of false prophets, not the word of false teachers, not the word of whoever and whatever. And let me tell you, there's many voices in the world today. And if we aren't careful, we can become drunk on the things of the world, we can listen to the wrong things, and the point of this whole thing is, is Jesus is coming for a bride that's without spot or wrinkle, wrinkle or blemish, spot or blemish. Some of you are already wrinkled, so you don't get to go. <laughs> I am not. So my point is this. What are we listening to? How much of the world, if Jesus is coming back, if Jesus is coming back and we all agree that He is, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt and dissolve with fervent heat. And the earth and the works, all the works, everything we're doing, all the works, no matter what it is, will be burned up. Seeing that these things are thus, this is going to happen. He's saying right there, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. What manner of persons ought we be in all holy living and godliness? See, we don't have to offer bullocks and rams and turtle doves and pigeons and, and goats and he goats and this, that, and the other, and the meat mingled with oil. Not like they did in the Old Testament. But we offer sacrifices that I give up me. I sacrifice me on the cross daily. I, I 
turn off my agenda and I accept his agenda. I don't listen to, I, it's good to know what's going on in the world. I, I, look, I listen and I know what's going on in the world. But it does not dictate to me. My emotions do not reflect what goes on in this world. I will not allow the world to tell me how I should live. God tells me how to live. I rebuke the fear. I rebuke the lies. I rebuke the deception. And I stand on what he says because I know he is coming back. Now the thing is, we're not perfect. We're not perfect. But I guarantee you this, he deserves our best. Good place for an amen right there. He deserves our best. And in this world with all the stuff, yes, the COVID-19, I believe, is a birth pain. No question about it. It's a birth pain of things to come. The day of the Lord is coming. And after COVID-19, there will be another one. And another one after that. And yet another one. They will grow closer together and they will grow stronger. Because that's what birth pains do. But they should not. They should not dictate to you how you are to be fearful, how you should live, how you should worry, or anything else. And we should not be intoxicated on the things of this world because they will intoxicate you. That's what they're there for. You can't have a conversation with people anymore that they don't pick their cell phone up and go to Facebook. Oh, wait, I just got to know. <laughs> uh, what, uh, what was you saying? <laughs> Nothing. We can be so caught up in all the new stuff, the new, the new fads, the new designs, the new electronics, the new and greater, the better and the bigger, that God takes a back seat. And we, as Christians, listen, it's our duty to sanctify God in the eyes of the people. It is our duty to sanctify God, make Him holy in the eyes of the people. And that's exactly why Aaron, at the beginning of this, had held his peace. Aaron's two sons just died, and there he was in the high priestly robe, Standing at the door of the tabernacle. They carried him out. They carried their sons out of the camp to bury him. And it says he held his peace. Because he wanted to sanctify God before the people. And the people were watching. When Jesus was on that cross, or before Pilate, Ezekiel says that he was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and he opened not his mouth. He never said, he could have said, I am innocent. I am the Son of God. Who do you think you are doing this to me? Could have called 12 legions of angels and obliterated the planet. But it wasn't his will. It was God's will that he was doing. He could have. But he didn't. He sanctified the Father in the eyes of the people. And that's why in John 17, his high priestly prayer, he says, I have glorified you. I have glorified you. And he did. And this is exactly what we are to do. Because he's coming back. He's coming back. We don't do it to make him come back. We do it because he is coming back. And each one of us will give an account of our life on this earth. Has nothing to do with heaven and hell. Salvation is a free gift. It's yours. Set that aside. You've got it. It's yours. But you will give an account of your life on this earth. 
what have you done? Your works will be judged. Rewards will be given. But know this. He is coming back. Are you ready? Are we really ready for him to come back? That's the question. That's the question. So the thing we need to do, as if the president was coming, clean up our house. We're going to have to clean ourselves up. Do that which is good. Do that which is right. Know that which is holy and profane. So that when we stand before him, he will say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Instructing us to the intent that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly. There we are again. And righteously and godly in this present world. Looking for the blessed hope and appearing the glory of our great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. 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 Stand to your feet. The ministry team will be up here. Also, don't forget, we have a uh, diaper shower. What's it called? A baby shower. (laughs) Diaper shower. We have a baby shower downstairs. Everyone is welcome. And the uh, ministry team will be up here. If you have prayer, if you need have need of a prayer or anything, they will be here to help you. But let's uh, let's bow our hearts. Father, I thank you and I praise you for this day, Lord. Uh, Father, I know that uh, a lot of this is hard to swallow. A lot of it's hard to understand. But I trust that the Holy Spirit will reveal the truth of all of this, Lord. That we will prepare our hearts. We will prepare our lives, Father God. We'll set our agenda aside, those things that we want, that those things that take so much space in our life, we'll do away with it, Lord, because we are waiting for your appearing. So, Father, I thank you and I praise you for each person that's here. I just speak blessings, life, and health upon each one, Father God. Meet their needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus, Father. We give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 You are dismissed.